So I received another written emailed question, uh, this time dealing with sexual sin. This email is from Isaiah and his email reads, I've been watching your videos for a while now. I recently gone, I've recently gone through a short season of sexual sin. I feel as no grace is left from me and am like Esau in Hebrews. I've cried out for God for help, but it feels like it's all gone. I struggled with sexual sin before I was a Christian and with while I called myself one. I feel as I was never regenerated by the spirit in the first place. What must I do? Is there any hope? So thank you for writing in with your question, Isaiah. Now, one distinction I need to make here is there are a lot of people that confuse struggling with a particular sin with flat out just being a slave to that sin. A lot of you guys are saying things like, oh, I'm struggling with this sin and I've been struggling with it for a season. But the truth is there really is no struggle. You're just habitually feasting on the sin, on that particular sin. Now, You'll call it a struggle because you know it's wrong. You feel terrible after you do it, but there's no evidences that you've gone to war with that sin. You're essentially a slave to it. Some of you guys are living with your boyfriend or girlfriend and are fornicating quite regularly. And you call yourself a Christian. Got a lot, got a lot of people that would do that. Okay, they're, they're sleeping with their boyfriend and girlfriend and would call themselves Christians. That's a very dangerous way to live. That's an easy way to lose your soul. Okay, sexual sin is deadly serious. Do not play with this. It's not just... Listen, it's not just deadly serious because you can lose your soul. How many abortions do you think transpired because of the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? And when I speak about relationships, I'm speaking about cohabitation, okay? Now, let's get back to what Isaiah said in his email. He says, I've cried out to God for help, but it feels like it's all gone. You got to be very careful here, okay? Be very careful of placing blame with God because that's what you're doing here. That's basically what you're doing. You're saying, well, if God didn't do it, I guess it's not going to get done, so I'm helpless. No, that's not how this works. God is sovereign, but you are responsible. Now, you might say responsible for what? You are responsible for putting off the old man. Ephesians 4.22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Look, what do you think the Bible means when it talks about putting sin to death, going to war with the flesh? Romans 8, putting the deeds of the body to death so that you may live. OK, this is all about your responsibility. This is about you. So many people sit around and, and think that they can pray to God and that God is just going to magically remove everything and just going to clear the the, the the way for them and make life easy. That's not how this works. OK, this is about your responsibility. This is about you getting up after you pray for strength to the Lord and then putting in the work. OK, whatever it takes to kill that sin, whatever it takes to remove that idol, that that sin, that thing that devours you in your time of weakness, whatever it is, whatever you have to do, remove it from your life. Okay. In the end, if you lose your soul over sexual sin, that's on you, not God. Okay. I mean, what did you think? Did you think that Christianity was supposed to be easy? No, this is hard. It's hard work. Okay. Now regards in regards to fornication. Okay. Fornication needs to be outright eradicated from your life. Okay. If you're out here sleeping around, having sex outside of marriage, Listen, don't even talk about Christianity. Okay, You're not there. You're not there yet. Um, as it is, you're lost. So you need to repent of that. Get out of that. Okay. And for those of you who are single, masturbation might be your struggle. Now, listen, masturbation is sinful and it's wrong. But this is what I will say regarding masturbation. If there isn't a prolonged time in between the times that you masturbate, okay, if you haven't made an attempt to fight that sin on a daily basis and then having victory over that sin for a prolonged period of time, OK, then you are in trouble. That's not your life in regards to masturbation. It's wrong. It's sinful. It needs to be put to death. But it's a kind of a fine line there um, for those of you who are single. Uh, I, I've, I've actually heard Tim Conway give this advice on, on masturbation as well as in regards to the if there's not a prolonged time or period of time in which you're having victory Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you may slip slide into that sin again and fall. Um, you, you repent, confess, and then get up, get back on the horse and then keep at it. But the, if, you, if you're just, if every time the urge hits you, you just run to it, that's evidence that you may be lost. Okay. There needs to be continual fighting, going to war with, praying for, uh, just denying the flesh when you feel that urge to do it, turning away from it. No, it, there needs to be that. That needs to be a mark of your life. Okay. Um, you know, and I'll end with this. When you fear going to hell more than you desire pleasing the flesh, that's when you begin to have victory over sexual sins. 
Okay, this is about fear, the fear of losing your soul. Now it's well over 50%, and the divorce rate is so high that for the first time in American history, and arguably even in Western history, that generations of young people are repudiating the institution of marriage altogether and are opting to cohabit without a marriage contract to unite them to each other. In the culture in which we live today, it is commonplace for young people to live together rather than to be married and to do so without any societal sanctions against them. It's a matter of course. But let me say this to you in all candor. It's a matter of course in the pagan society. But for Christians ever to cohabit outside the institution of marriage is a gross and heinous sin against God and is something that should be absolutely unheard of in the Christian community. But you know as well as I do that this practice is now taking place widely within the church because so often even professing Christians take their cue not from the Word of God on how we should live, but rather from the culture around them. And what customs are acceptable in our culture, remember, are pagan customs. And we are called as Christians to march to a different drummer.